though you would like to get access to government information and you're not sure where to start, this video from the Data Practices Office will help. In Minnesota, we call information that government collects, creates, receives, maintains, or disseminates government data. Government data could be contained in paper files, a video, a CD-ROM or thumb drive, emails, or even maps. A data request is a formal request for information from a government entity in Minnesota that triggers its obligations to respond. In Minnesota, we have a law called the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act, or Data Practices Act for short. It lays out the framework for getting access to government information. The law gives you the right to access public information and information about you by either inspecting or getting copies. This law does not apply to the courts or the legislature. Those bodies have their own rules of access. The Data Practices Act applies to cities, counties, state agencies, school districts, and other government bodies created in law. The first step to getting the information you want is to make sure that you know how, where, and to whom to send your request. The law helps us with this. The law requires each government entity to have written policies that walk requesters through how to make a data request. Many entities have posted their policies online. For those entities that do not post their policies online, you will need to contact the entity. Entities are required to give out free copies of their policies or have the policies posted in a conspicuous place within the entity. Some policies include a form that you can fill out. Some entities use an online portal. Most entities with forms and portals also offer alternative ways to submit a request, and those should be identified in the policies. You can see the Department of Administration's access policies in the photo on this slide. What if you can't find the policy? Then you want to send your request in writing to the responsible authority. The responsible authority is the person within the entity who is ultimately responsible for data practices. This is important because the requirement for the government to respond applies when the requester has made a proper request, and part of making a proper request is sending it to the right person. Every government entity has a responsible authority set out in the Data Practices Act and listed on this slide. Each entity should also have a Data Practices Compliance Official. In smaller entities, the Data Practices Compliance Official and the responsible authority might be the same person. But the, DB, the DPCO's job is to answer questions about getting access to data, and contacting the DPCO is a good place to start if you are not sure how. When making your request, make sure you are asking for information or data under the Data Practices Act or Chapter 13, and not FOIA. FOIA, or the, federal, the Freedom of Information Act, is a federal law that only applies to federal agencies. You can always inspect data for free. If you want copies, you may be required to pay for them. So in your request, make sure you state whether you want to inspect or copies. If you are asking for public data, the government cannot ask you why you want it or ask you to identify yourself. You may choose to provide some identifying information for contact purposes. Note that requests for public data by members of the public are public, so information that you give out about your request may be accessed by others. While the government cannot ask you why you want public information, government may ask clarifying questions about the scope of your request or the particular records or information you are seeking so that it can provide a more appropriate response. You also want to make sure that you ask for data and not ask questions, which we'll talk about in the next slide. For example, look at this email. Is this a data request that a government entity has an obligation to respond to? The email is to the responsible authority from John Q. Public, and it says, why did that bridge project cost so much? No, the Data Practices Act does not require government to answer questions about data. It requires them to respond to data requests. So if you send an email or letter like this to the government and you do not receive a response, the entity is likely making more of a customer service decision rather than failing to fulfill its obligations under the Data Practices Act, because this email would not be a data request. How about this second version? Under Chapter 13, I would like to inspect all data relating to the cost of the bridge project, including budgets, invoices, and estimates. Yes, this is a request and the entity would need to respond. It is addressed to the responsible authority, it references Chapter 13, it asks to inspect and identifies the data. 
It does not identify which bridge project, and that would probably be something that the responsible authority would want to clarify before responding. Now that you've made a proper request and you've sent it to the appropriate person, what happens? The government has three options for responding. If the data that you requested exists and you are entitled to access, the government must provide the data. If you are not entitled to get access, the government has to tell you the specific law that prevents you from having access. Finally, the third option is that you've asked for data that do not exist. This could be for a variety of reasons. Perhaps the data did exist but have been destroyed. Or it could be that government simply does not create or maintain the kind of information that you requested, which we will discuss in the next slide. It almost goes without saying that no response is not an appropriate response. If you have submitted a request to the appropriate person, the government must respond. However, the Data Practices Act does not require entities to acknowledge that a request has been received, nor does it require communication while the government is fulfilling the request. As a best practice and a customer service, an entity might choose to contact a requester while the request is pending. You can always contact the DPCO, the Data Practices Compliance Official, with any status questions. As we just went over, if data do not exist, government does not have an obligation to provide requested data, and that is because entities are not required to create data in response to a data request, generally. You have the right to access government information in the format in which entities maintain it. So if you ask for an Excel spreadsheet, but government maintains the information in paper, the government is not required to create an electronic spreadsheet for you. This also commonly happens when data requesters ask for lists. Sometimes government maintains lists and other times they don't. So if you ask for a list and it's not one that government maintains, they don't have to create it. They may also see some value in that type of list, so they may choose to create it, but that's outside of the Data Practices Act and government isn't obligated to create data in those situations. You also have the right to have data explained to you. This would include technical terms and abbreviations. Jargon is very common in government work, so you can definitely ask those questions and get an explanation. Respo how long will it take? Response times differ depending on the requester and the request. So if you're asking for public data, there is not a specific number of days in which a government entity must respond. Government needs to respond in an appropriate and prompt reasonable amount of time. What does that mean? It likely depends on the situation and the amount of data being requested and how complex the, the request is. So it will vary from request to request and entity to entity. On the other hand, if you are the subject of the data, government must respond immediately if possible or within 10 business days. How much will it cost? Remember, inspection is always free. So as a requester, you can always go into an entity's office and look at the data. The Commissioner of Administration has also said that, except in limited circumstances, you can take photos of the data you are inspecting, and that is still free. If you want the government to make you a copy, then they can charge you according to the table here. If you have questions about your charges, you can contact the Data Practices Compliance Official at the entity for an explanation, or you can contact our office and we can look at the charges together. As I mentioned, if you are the subject of the information, then you have slightly different rights than requesters who want public data. As seen in the previous slides, there are differences in time limits and in copy cost charges. Another important difference is, if you ask for data about yourself, the government does not have to provide you the same data within a six-month period unless the data somehow changes. So, for instance, if you are a government employee and you want your personnel file, you can have it. But then if you ask for it again within that six month period and nothing has changed, your employer does not have to provide you access. However, if in the interim you have had a performance review and you want a copy of that, then the government would have to provide it even if it's in, within that six months. Note also that if you want access to private data about yourself, you will need to verify your identity and that is a difference from requesters who are requesting public data. What if your request for access has been denied? If they haven't already provided it, you can ask the entity to provide the basis in writing. 
You can contact the entity's data practices compliance officials with questions or concerns about a determination or about access to data. You can also contact us at the Data Practices Office. We may, may be able to assist you to resolve a dispute informally, or we may help clarify an entity's response. In rare occasions, the Data Practices Office may agree to issue a non-binding advisory opinion on behalf of the Commissioner of Administration if clarification of the issues will be helpful to others. There is also a complaint process at the Office of Administrative Hearings. Complaints will be reviewed by an administrative law judge and resolved relatively quickly. There is, however, a $1,000 filing fee for this complaint process. You can contact an attorney to discuss filing a civil action in district court. Enforcement of the Data Practices Act is largely through the courts. You can bring an action to compel compliance, or if you are a data subject, you can seek damages through litigation. Another option would be to contact legislators or the media. If the issues related to your request are a matter of public concern, or you don't agree with how the law is written, consider educating both lawmakers and your fellow citizens by alerting them to the problem. Sometimes the court of public opinion can be very effective. We have many more resources on our website, including a sample data request letter that you may download and use. I'll show you how to locate it on the Data Practices Office website. From the Data Practices Office homepage, you can select Data Practices and choose Requesting Data. This page has a lot of information from this presentation, and also you can click here for a sample letter for public data and data subject request. We hope that this presentation has been helpful and you now know how to make a data request. If you have questions about how to get access to data or an entity's response to your data request, please feel free to contact the Data Practices Office. We are here to help the public and government understand their rights and responsibilities under the Minnesota Government Data Practices Act. Thanks for watching.